before we proceed, recall the formal statement of the divergence theorem. So given the depth vector field, and this is important to note, then the surface integral of u times the unit normal vector over the surface is the volume integral of the gradient of u over the volume. Now, coming back to our resultant force, it is the integral of pressure, which is a scalar field. So as you can see, F is simply rho gz, we did this before, so it's not like the original u, which is vector field. We cannot simply substitute this to the divergence theorem. So we have to do something different. Now it turns out you can derive the equivalent gradient theorem. We're not going to do it here. So no derivation this time. Now the, the gradient theorem states that given u as a scalar function, the surface integral of u times the normal vector of the surface equals the gradient of u. So this is where we can apply the scalar quantity in the theorem. So the whole point here is we can now apply the expression to our pressure scalar field. Now, the gradient of P, since P is scalar, so its gradient is vector field. So, we have gradient like this. And because of the zero components for X and Y, then we just have rho G in the Z direction, or uh, negative rho G. So we just ignore the other integrals. Now we can apply the gradient theorem. So just to rewrite the equation, uh, the surface integral of P is now the triple integral of rho G, which is the gradient of P. And we have this unit vector k, right, to denote the uh, z component of the vector. So what we have here is k is the unit vector pointing upward along the z axis. Now looking at the triple integral, the integrand consists in only constants, including the unit vector. So we can just shift them out and you just end up with this nice integration of 1 over the volume. So this is nothing more than the volume to, to get the volume of the object. Now if you prescribe the proper limits to the integrals, you will get the part of the volume of the solid that is inside the fluid. So the left hand side is equal to rho g v times k. Now rho g v is the weight. By now you should see, be able to see it. You can see that we start with the right setup of the coordinate. So if you do that, we will naturally arrive at the expression of the resultant force f pointing upward as we expected. Now, just a quick demonstration why this is weight since density is defined by mass over volume, then m is simply rho v. Now, if you mg, then you get the weight. So that's it.